Okay, so I am joined by Stuart McCallum. Hello. How are you doing? All right, you? Yeah, that what? Good. <laughs> um, so, fantastic guitarist, composer, improviser. Um, your musical influences spread across many genres. Mm -hmm. um, you scored music for the likes of the Northern Ballet. Yeah. Uh, best known for your cinematic orchestra days. Um, you've played with some fantastic jazz musicians such as Mike Gibbs, um, Tim Garland. You're in a band with Rihanna Conley, another a duet with Mike Walker. Mm. Um, yeah. Played all over the world, and you've just made a full solo, al solo album entitled City. That's right. Not bad. Yeah. Few things going on there. <laughs> um, so, shall we just? Can I love to know what age you were when you first started? I can't actually remember. I really got into it when I was about 15. Right, so yeah. quite old, I guess. I suppose so, yeah. I mean, like, my dad played a bit of guitar, you know, a little bit. And then my brother was into... He played bass, actually. And then my brother's mate was the guitarist in their kind of school band. And he was, like, the cool one that okay. everyone liked. And, you know, so I was like, all right. And that's what, <laughs> you know, I was sense. fairly socially inept, you know, at that age. And maybe someone would say now, but um, <laughs> and then yeah, I just thought right, I'll just do that, and it, and I just kind of think, but I don't think I thought that through. You know, I just thought I think I kind of feel like music chose me. And I'm sure you're the same. Yeah. It's like you don't really have a choice in the matter. That's just what you're doing yeah. from that point that's in your the life. Else. There's you know you like a racehorse with blinkers on. It's yeah. just like that's it. You know, there is nothing else. And it's I felt well, I still feel really lucky to have had that. Uh, that you know, you say it's quite old, but. I still think from the age of 15 to have a complete and utter direct path of what the rest of your life is all about, yeah. that's pretty amazing. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah. yeah. It's a nice way to look at it, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah. And I think if it, if it is going to be that serious and it, not coming from a musical background, then yeah, then it, it wasn't the obvious choice, but it just was. Mm. It became you just that, that you know, light from, yeah. from being young. And I just, yeah. I'm still as excited about it and curious and you know, I feel like I know, I probably feel like, I, you know, I, I'm relatively self-assured of what I do, but I also feel like I probably know less than yeah. when, I when I started, because you kind of think, oh, there's not much to learn. But then when you start to learn, you realise how much there is to learn. Yeah, and you are one of those musicians, I mean, like, I'll touch more on it, I guess, later on, but you are one of those musicians that always wants to learn. Yeah. Like, I, I really well, you just had a lesson a few, haven't I? So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we just had a little yeah. skill swap, yeah. 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 Um, like, which is something that, I guess it's such a good skill to have as, a, as a, I think that's... I think, I think it just keeps skill. it real, doesn't it? It keeps yeah. you... Um, it keeps you humble, doesn't it? You know, and I think that's a really valuable no, thing. Yeah. Just to not think that you know it all and to think... And to not have that kind of concept that what you do is it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that there is... You know, always to have that thought there is something beyond where you are. Yeah. And if you just open your head up and you're, you know, just... Just allow other people to influence what you do mm -hmm. and to see the beauty in what they do and try, want to try and absorb some of that into your thing. Yeah, you know, that's yeah. It. yeah, that's what it's all about to me. Yeah, yeah. good stuff. And when you, you know, when you first started, was it kind of, I mean, because you are, I say that you sit between different genres, like you are very well known on the jazz circuit and stuff. Was, was it jazz that you did? No, I mean, initially it was like rock, you know, classic kind of 70s, right. like Deep Purple and Jimi Hendrix, and, which is kind of what my. Dad was into my brother and my first guitar teacher was showing me that the first tune on the stairway to heaven as well. Really? And I, yeah, I just went straight in at the deep end of like pure rock cheese, you know. And then, um, <laughs> and then yeah, I just then he kind of played me some of the jazz guys like um, John McLaughlin and uh, John Schofield, you know, like these more modern guys, and I got into the older guys as well. Um, and just you, like you know, we're talking about before you just go on your own journey, didn't you? Yeah. So you know, you listen to that guy, and then oh, that there's that drummer on that album, but he's on that album. Maybe I should buy that. And that was at the time when you did have to buy albums. Yeah. So yeah. you kind of go to the local record store, and oh yeah, well I get this one, and yeah, then and then it was all, it was yeah. Ace, you know, yeah. and it was, and then and you don't, I can't really remember how I made all them connections, but I obviously did. Yeah. And then yeah. I met, and I started coming into because I lived just outside of Manchester, and I started coming into Manchester. As soon as I could drive, and I used to go to the jam session at night and day, which was on a Monday night, and there was a lot. It was an amazing scene actually. Then, you went to some really heavy players and you know jazz yeah. circles. 
and they were all at this jam session. So I got That's to play okay. with them and I'd go home and you know, I'd, I'd kind of be able to get up first because I was like, oh, I've got to go to school in the morning, so I've got to yeah. go home, you know. Yeah. So they were, they were really encouraging and this guy, uh, Mike Aptron, kind of took me under his wing and said, come out to my house and, and he, I just yeah. used to go to his house for the whole day and he'd just play and he'd show me stuff and he, you know, he wasn't asked about money, but he was just, yeah. I think someone else had done that for him and he was kind of, so yeah. yeah, and you really sorted that out. And then I had another teacher when I, was, I went to uni, did music there, and I went for the guy with Mike Walker, who I'm now playing right. duo with. Okay. So he, I got him for two years at uni, and he was great. Just got, I kind of had quite bad RSI problems at uni, and he, you know, got me into this real kind of disciplined method, I guess. Which over time did start to do my head in, so I've kind of eased up a bit on that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I kind of I had to go through it to get my arms. So, yeah, exactly. Stuff, so. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I've had, you know, I've had an awful lot of help, and then obviously you play with lots of people, and you can talk to them, and I can chat to you about your music, and I was trying, you know, just chat to people about what their opinions are, and then go home and check stuff out. And, yeah. You know, yeah. It's yeah. this constant kind constant of constant drive to yeah, learn, to learn, yeah, to, move yeah. forward, yeah. yeah. Um. Talking a little bit more specifically about your music, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, over the last couple of years, more than once have heard, you know, when you hear different musicians yeah, right. talk, because like, musicians do talk about each other. Right, I'm worried about um, yeah. <laughs> And um, I've heard a couple of times people say, the thing about Stuart McCallum is you can tell by the way that he plays that he is, that if he really wanted to, he could just like glam like loads of wank out yeah, the whole yeah. night and just you know yeah. like he, he he basically that he's got the skill of being able to give you tasters of of pure magic and you know he's, yeah. he knows where to give space to music and things like that and yeah. i think that's a really great compliment to have as a musician mm. because you know yeah there's nothing better than that yeah yeah because they're saying like you know you can really like you've got such a skill that you know how to use it well yeah i think because when, when i was practicing a lot and you know like very focused getting i was really into john coltrane and his whole kind of um his whole philosophy which is i mean it's pretty far out and stuff you know but like that he liked to have he was a saxophone player saxophone uh jazz saxophone <laughs> and uh, he just wanted to have no physical limitations so that his concept was that his music would be understood by any sentient being anywhere in the universe. Wow, well, okay. Because it was channeling the energy of the oneness of the universe without any physical limitation. So it wasn't too linked into human experience, okay. it was like universal experience. Yeah. And I was really into that kind of train of thought when I was younger. I guess in some ways I kind of am now a little bit. Um, but he, so it was just like to remove all physical boundaries, you know. Mm. So and the things I was practicing, I would never really practice what I was doing on gigs. Okay. I'd be practicing stuff, you know, like scales and stuff, just to kind of free myself, you know, of those physical challenges, you know, yeah. and mental challenges, you know, so that you just kind of you can just play, and then so that then you can everything becomes more instinctive and intuitive. Mm -hmm. You know, and obviously, you know, you have to listen to a lot of music to get your reference points and to, yeah. you know, to communicate with other musicians from the, from the same starting point, you know. You, yeah. You, you know, I hear that and then you hear that and we kind of make it happen together. Yeah, of. yeah. Have to. Um, so that was my thing that I was really into. And then what I realised, and I think actually playing electric guitar, you've really got to be careful of this, is that if you go, everyone just goes, oh, bloody hell, guitarists, you know. Oh. So now I was thinking, but that's just, that's that's what I was getting at is because a lot of people don't have that right. discipline or right. outlook to be able to to know that isn't what yeah what is tasteful. It, yeah, you know, it might be. But maybe that's that's just a growing up thing as well, isn't it? Yeah, because you know, it, it's thing you change what you're impressed by, you know, as you get older. Yeah. So as I listen to more music, and I was like, that guy, you know, he can. I was thinking about a drummer called Peter Eskin, who's you know, heard him when he was obviously taking loads of drugs in the 70s and it was like really fiery and wow, you know, like very exciting and just, yeah. you know, really revved up. And then he, he now gets, a lot of the gigs he does are like orchestral gigs where he's playing jazz with an orchestra and it's just so beautiful the way he touches, yeah. you know, and it's just got this mastery, you know, and that's real mastery in it is to, is to have all that facility and just, and put all that facility into how you play that one yeah. note, you know, 
that's what makes a really great musician, yeah. in my opinion. Yeah. You know, yeah. and um, from the I, sometimes I feel that now that I've got kids and I don't get much chance to practice anymore, I I do feel physically not as loose as I used to do when I was younger. Okay. So it's almost like I've lost some technique, but in some ways that then puts more emphasis on being musical. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. And that's one thing I found when I was practicing a lot. I was like, fucking hell, you know, like these, sorry, I shouldn't swear to anyone. But you know, that like, these people that don't practice very much can be so musical and so good and actually better than me, you know? And that, and that was like a good lesson. It's like, well, maybe I need to live life and experience things. And, and that live for the yeah, process. Yeah, exactly. Before, and, it, yeah. and then maybe it did, maybe it didn't, who knows? Yeah, yeah. But then I also thought, I'm going to go on and on now. It's that <laughs> tea and this But <laughs> anyway, yeah, yeah. Is it, that, you know, a lot of people think, oh, Stuart, you know, plays quite chilled out music and, you know, I think I get kind of in that kind of down-tempo, chill out stuff. But I, when I'm playing it, I feel like I'm just like, you know, like firing and charged, yeah. you know, but it comes across as quite chilled out. Yeah. But to me, I'm just like, I can't really give much more to it. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So I'm not one of those players that just goes and can rattle all that stuff off. You know? Yeah, yeah. Because I teach kids that can do that, you know. Yeah. And there's not much emotion going yeah, on. Yeah. And it's a very kind of like scientific, mechanical process. Yeah, yeah. You know, and I'm more into kind of, Feeling, I guess. Yeah, emotion and yeah. you know being this cathartic release of, yeah. of, of of what's going on inside you, and if you put that kind of weight into the notes you play, and that's where it's interesting. For yeah, me. for me, that's only my opinion. Now, isn't yeah, it? I, I, I'd yeah. go with that. So the emotion that's expressed in a jazz piece or a classical piece or a drum and bass piece or a dubstep piece or a, an Irish traditional piece, it's the same stuff in it. We're all experiencing highs, lows, joys, sadness. Yeah. But then we're expressing it through our kind of, in our dialect, mm -hmm. through those 12 notes in those 16 so or, true, yeah. you know, 12 beat rhythms. That's pretty much it. And it's the same all over the world. It just sounds a bit different when it comes out. Yeah. Because of where we've grown up and what reference points we've all got and what we assume as being a natural way of doing it, you know, because of the culture that we live in, you know. That's a beautiful way of thinking about it. It's like... Because when you think about it in that way, no, no music's more superior than another music. No, no. It's just people. It's just, just people expressing, expressing themselves, and that's yeah. that is the most valuable part of music. Yeah. And that's what brings people together. Yeah. Because people want to, they want to be touched by someone else's experience, and and the good thing about music and instrumental music or vocal music is that it doesn't have the same. I mean, maybe vocal music to some extent a little bit more, but it doesn't have the same boundaries as, as a verbal language, mm -hmm. you know, like a word, if I say good, that's quite boxed in, but in a musical expression, you know, good can just be this blurry kind of feeling, yeah. you know, yeah. but it's still a language and you're still expressing yeah. your experience. Through you the, the skills that you have. Yeah, it's that, all, yeah that, that one has as a yeah. musician, yeah. 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 yeah, that's a beautiful way of looking. Um, so you've just made your fourth uh, solo album. Yeah, City. Nothing to do with football. <laughs> yeah. The United yeah, yeah. City. Neither. Neither. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm in the not bothered camp. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, this is different. I was I was reading up a bit about it. Yes, I mean, I've heard a lot of it and stuff, and it's yeah, amazing. Yeah. Oh, you played it. I've played it. But I've I've read a little bit about it as well. Right. And it's the first time that you've worked with Richard. The... Stayed in the drummer. Yeah. As, yeah, as, a producer, as a producer, role, yeah. In a, yeah. Yeah, so I met him when we were both doing cinematic orchestra. Um, and we just kind of hit it off, kind of personally and creatively. It's just one of the, like with Rain is the same thing, you know, just it's just very easy and things just happen. You know, obviously that it's not always that easy and, you know, to actually finish an album takes a lot of work, but the actual kind of creative spark yeah. between us is just there, you know and it's not forced, it's just kind of natural, and good stuff comes out, you know? Yeah, yeah, there's a good yeah. vibe between the two of yeah. them work together. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It's kind of nice and lighthearted, but still serious. But serious, exactly, yeah. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it just felt like I did some uh, writing on his album, which basically involved getting really drunk, and <laughs> just playing all this stuff for him, and then he kind of sampled it. Um, but don't tell anyone that. Uh, and then, uh, yeah, that's it, yeah. And then I just kind of said to him, you know, I want to do another album, are you up for producing it, you know, and, you know, I want you to produce it for this reason, and 
it was quite hard in some ways just to let go a lot, you know. Yeah, can I imagine? Yeah, yeah, the one before that I kind of written so much of it, like orchestral parts and the arrangements and even some of the drum beats and the bass lines, and it was all like, wow, Stuart McCallum, yeah. you know, everything. It's everything just, you know, yeah. not totally everything, but, you know, quite a lot of it. Um, but then this, it was kind of like I'd write something and then send it down to him. And, he and then, he'd, then he'd do something completely different with it, send it back. And some of them, I'd have, I'd have given him something more concrete to start with and it didn't change that much. Um, you know, but then he brought it into his world, which is a more of an, like an electronic, a kind of dubstep kind okay. of... Okay. You know, that he's yeah. part of that whole kind of London electronic music scene. See, yeah. You know, since yeah. the days of drum and bass and then to breakbeat and then into dubstep and blah, 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 all that kind of stuff. He's, he's been a big part of that. Yeah. As a musician, but as a fan as well, you know. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so it's just good to work with someone with a different headspace, you know, f with similar reference points in terms of other music, but then with totally brand new ones. Yeah, yeah. You know, and just and it's just like framing it in in that dialect or that kind of musical context, you know. And, and then you hear your music differently. Which is pretty far out. Yeah, it's yeah. like wow. Yeah. Why didn't I ever think of doing shit? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which is you know. It's like, like we said before, it's a great learning experience because he's obviously really rhythmically more aware than I am and the way he plays his things rhythmically, you know, it's like, it's hard, but it makes for interesting music. I yeah, think, yeah, yeah, and I you guess you learn as, I've learned a lot, at yeah. the same time, yeah. Yeah, cause you, because it's something that you're closely attached to, then gets then gets a different kind of paintbrush on it, it's yeah. like, wow, Yeah, that's yeah. amazing, yeah. yeah. Yeah, and it's also the first time that you've used vocals. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So um, we launched. Well, you launched it yeah. well, at the it, so yeah. Yeah. Um, a couple of months ago, and that was a, well. I, I, I've seen JP Cooper play before, and he's amazing. But yeah. it was also the first time that I'd seen Charlie. Charlie. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But in the like, amazing. Equally amazing. Yeah. 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 I think. I mean, it's not like. I've not kind of gone, right, I'll make a bit more money if I... <laughs> but it's actually, I'm just actually have become more into vocal music. Yeah. So, you know, if I... And it complements it so well. Yeah, that's it. And yeah. I, if I put on a record now, you know, I wouldn't want to listen to just an instrumental record. I'd yeah. want to have a few vocal tracks in there. Yeah. Um, and the JP track came about because he's been into my stuff and I've been into his stuff for ages, really. And we've kind of always talked about doing something. So he said, oh, do you want to maybe try and produce one of my tracks? I was like, okay. So I went round to his house and oh. just recorded him singing and playing guitar. Yeah. And then I was like, so, well, maybe me and Richard should try and produce this track then. Yeah, okay. So then I kind of sampled the vocal bit that's in it out of his track, his whole track, and wrote some new chords. And then for Richard's album, we've done a bit of a recording session that I, I had some of the files for the drums for. I was like, so I started messing around with that. I was like, oh, that's about the same tempo. Let's just try and drop in that in. So basically, it all worked in favor yeah. of your CD. <laughs> yeah, I was like, well, that's one day for you. And then, uh, then I just sent, I kind of got a bit of a sketch for it, sent it down to Richard. He was like, and then he put on like this synth thing, which just kind of brought everything together. Yeah, and made it's it a bit, I love that track. Yeah, it's, it's like, really good. Yeah, and the, yeah. the whole CD, like itself, it's like I'm saying, you've got so many different influences in it. I think the track I'm doing, you were going for more of a folky. Kind yeah, well, that's it. well, I think that's one thing that ties me and Richard together is we're both into kind of folky stuff. So he's in, really into Lao. Yeah. Um, and there's a sample of Lao. I can say that because we've got it all clear. <laughs> yeah. Um, there's a, yeah, there's a sample of Lao on that track. Um, and then, yeah, so I guess there is that kind of, that sense in, in there, as along with all the kind of the electronic kind of stuff as well, and a bit of jazzy, solo y stuff, and yeah. then some kind of R&B vocals, and then... You know, he's got the singer from Zero Seven on it on one of the tracks, so it's kind of more ethereally kind of, yeah. So it's a good mishmash, I think. Yeah, it's been well received at the minute, so that's good. Yeah, and yeah. what are you are you hoping to? I know you've been gigging it a little bit, but are you hoping to go to further afield? Or? Yeah, I mean, yes and no. I mean, it's just um, it's expensive to go abroad, you know, touring. It is possible. Um, but I think, I guess the primary market at the minute that I want to focus on is the UK. Um, if, I mean, I actually got, yeah, I don't bother. But, yeah, the last time I put out, I did do a few gigs in Europe. Yeah. Um, but it's just, the, the music, I guess, like working with Richard and people from London is that they're just a little bit more expensive than the northern guys, you know? Yeah. Um, Buying the so because it's more expensive to live there. To live so, there, yeah. yeah. So, um, 
yeah, it just makes everything just that little bit more costly and not really cost effective. Okay. Without having some support from the label when it's not, you know, selling enough copies to kind of warrant that level yeah. of support. Yeah. 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 But you know, you maybe. Know. Yeah. You know, yeah. yeah. So you, your fans uh, for your music come from far and wide That's right. to, to hear you. Yeah, yeah. Um, All the way from Liddington to Levenshoe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Recently you were telling me a story about um, uh, Lament for Levenshoe, which is a piece mm -hmm. that you wrote, and I find it quite a funny story because I was yeah. born and bred in Levenshoe, yeah, and I love it. Right. It's a real working class it's proper, isn't it? yeah. area, it's yeah. Um, but tell me a bit about the story because I think it's funny. Okay, so I call it Lament for Levenshoe because the melody sounds a bit like those words to me, so it's not written for Levin Dream or anything like that. It's just maybe it was, I don't know. But I, <laughs> well, not in my head. Yeah. Um, so this guy got in touch with me by email and said, How did you do it? Um, I'm just writing, recording the track, the Mental Levin or something like that, you know. Uh, please, could you. Uh, I, I came from York to visit Levin the other day. Wait, did the, was his accent in the email? Was it? No, but I'm just. <laughs> okay, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. You have your own accents, so. <laughs> but I came from New York to visit Levin the other day and I'm quite surprised. What do you miss about it? <laughs> so then I was like, I was a bit busy and I just kind of let it disappear in my inbox. And then about two days later, Hatch Stewart, sorry to bother you, but I was just a little baffled. <laughs> Please could you get back to me? I just uh, love the idea uh, yeah. of someone travelling. to Levin yeah. I mean, as I say, I love it and it's yeah. got real character, but a pilgrim going yeah, yeah. to Levin And we've got a free rail card or something, it's just retired. <laughs> Got to, you know, oh, I love it. I love that. Did you get back to him and say, I did. nothing really, I just named it? I was like, why well, are you just not seeing the inner beauty? Is that what you said? No, I didn't. But can you imagine if you walk down the steps to Levin Gym Station? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh that's <laughs> great. Um, well, uh, well, I was just maybe going to finish by asking you what you're up to, like, Right I was mentioning it. Yeah, right now, and what your plans are over the next. What's your three year plan? Three year plan, yeah. <laughs> to survive. <laughs> yeah. um, well, I've got two little kids, so that's quite um, uh, a lovely part, but also uh, a, you know, a tiring part of your life. So it absorb, you know, it's very absorbing of your time. So, yeah. what I guess it's maybe a bit more focused musically on like, uh, what am I doing? I'm getting the video of our gig we did at the Royal Northern, getting all that sorted for YouTube. Okay. Uh, there's stuff I've done with Raina, it's a band called The Breath, and that's coming out next year. Um, so, yeah, we're doing some filming for that soon. We're going down to it's, we got signed to Real World, which is really good. Oh, wow. And so we're going down to the studio, Real World Studios, to do some oh. filming in a couple of weeks. Like some kind of, you know, internet profile stuff. Yeah. Um, so that's really exciting. What is the kind of stuff that you're doing with Rihanna? So Rihanna. Rihanna's kind of folky, yeah. jazzy, bluesy. She's another one that sits between lines. Yeah, yeah. Um, so how, what, what is it that you do? It's kind of, see, this is the tricky thing, and this is what the label are battling with. It's like, what, what is do it? We put yeah, it? Yeah, 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 yeah. So it's, it's kind of got folky elements from Rihanna, and I guess with acoustic guitar, it's also got electric guitar, keyboards, uh, kind of beats with this guy Luke Flowers, who's a cinema coaster. So he's, you know, great at beats, a uh, wicked bass player from London, and then strings and electronics and stuff that yeah. I, because I produced it, so it's kind of stuff that I would do as a producer, I guess. Yeah. And sonic palette that I enjoy. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Sounds wicked. It is oh, really good. I'm really, really pleased with it. Yeah. And, yeah. Um, I like, you know, we've got this amazing guy to mix it, who's like a three-time Grammy Award winning heavyweight, you know, best mate with Peter Gabriel. He's oh, Peter Gabriel's like go-to guy if Peter's like not a bit kind of like, either. yeah, so it's pretty, yeah. just crazy really, um, and very exciting. Yeah. That so that's, I guess that's my main focus. Yeah. And then I'm also then, you know, just working on, I quite like to do a solo guitar record. So I'm working on some new techniques, things with the drumstick and some tappity things. I've come for a lesson on the Irishy stuff. So Which I can hopefully real. try and yeah, try and incorporate <laughs> a bit of that into it. Yeah. But actually understand it properly, you know, and just I guess just trying to once you, when you finish an album and you put it out, you have to let the dust settle a little bit. Yeah. And think yeah. like what do yeah. I want to do next? Where do you I know? Go? Yeah. yeah. And, and aside from all that you do teaching at Leeds. Yeah, Leeds. that's right, yeah. yeah. So, so I teach at the College of Music in Leeds. Um and yeah, that's a really enjoyable part of my musical life as well. You know, some great kids there and um, it's just a really good working environment, you know, yeah. very creative place. Because it seems yeah. to me as well that you really value 
passing it on. Teaching, yeah, yeah, I think it's, I mean, I know how important it's been to me and I know um, how important it will be to other people, you know? Yeah. And the value, of, like if everyone who taught, who plays music doesn't teach anyone, music would die, yeah. wouldn't it, you know? You need so it's, it, yeah. it's just part of, it should it's be part of the culture of being a musician, you know? Yeah. Um, because I think you can make such a big difference to someone. Yeah. You know? yeah. It just by having experience. That's yeah. all. That's it. And that's what I say to him. It's like the only difference between you and me is I'm older and I've done more stuff. That's it's it. It's so refreshing to yeah. hear that outlook. Yeah. You know, that's a really great outlook to have. You know, yeah. as a as a musician and to to just really know your ground and. Yeah. You know like, Yeah. And where you come from and. Yeah. You know, it's just like I'm not anything special. You, you know. know to see it as a I process. just worked hard. Yeah. You know, and I continue to work hard. Yeah. And yeah. then, you know, when I tell them about my day and what I fit into a day, they're just like, oh, what? <laughs> I know. Do you know what I mean? Because I don't run the country. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. At night, I'm just. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Superman. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's it. Uh, yeah. Wicked. Yeah. Um, so, you're going to play a piece. To oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. Finish. You, um, when, it, well, uh, just been looking it up. Uh, it was uh, the music of it was written by Victor Young way back yeah. in 1952. So yeah, just standard one, yeah. now. Yeah, so it's like a American. They call it the American songbook, right. which is like a you know that's the just standard terminology. So from the songbook would be all of the musicals that happened from the 20s up to the ah, 50s, I guess. Okay. All of those songs in the songbook. Right. And that's kind of what just. Like the Bible. Then. Kind of, and then I guess what what jazz musicians from the, like the forties onwards did was then reharmonize the melodies in a more kind of complex Western harmony style, right. you know, oh, using okay. the cycle of fifths and all that kind yeah. of harmonic information, and they would reharmonize the melodies into this kind of clever fancy pants jazz okay. harmony stuff. Mm -hmm. And what I've it's a little bit of a side hobby of mine is to try and find one of them tunes that where the melody is tonal and they've gone all over the place with the chords underneath it and to kind of strip all that away and just kind of do something simple and tonal with it again. Yeah, you know, and that's, um, what, you that's what I've done with this one. It's beautiful. So it's called uh, When I Fall In Love. When you got off the stage at the RNCM, one thing you said was, every time I play that reminds me of my kids. Yeah. And I thought that was a lovely kind of, you know, image for you to have when you Yeah, definitely, yeah. I mean, yeah. because, yeah, you'd learn a lot about love. Yeah, kids, yeah, yeah, I bet, yeah. yeah. So I'm gonna let
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.